Greetings folks, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we're going to continue our investigation into using Python. So today we're going to look at how we can get values from the user, in other words the person who's running the program. And what we're looking for is a function that is sort of the opposite of the print function, right? Print allows us to produce things in our output window. And what we want to do is get values from the user in this window so that we can manipulate them and do things. That function is called input. And ordinarily, its argument in here would be a prompt, so a string prompt. In our case, I'm going to say something like, enter your name, right? Fairly simple. This is going to return to us a string. This is very important. It doesn't matter what you type in. Type in a string of numbers. It always comes back as a character string. All right. So I'm just going to echo this back out with our trusty print statement. We'll just say, hello, A. Hey. So you're going to type in your name, and then you know, it should just echo back, hello, and your name. All right, enter your name. Larry. Hello, Larry. Right, fairly straightforward. All right, now, what if you type in a you know, numeric value, uh, value? Is there a problem with that? You know, type in your name. Oh, my name is 12. Hello, 12. Okay. Now, consider the following. What if we do some math on A? Like I say, oh, A is uh, 2 times A. I just want to double A. That's all I want to do, just double it. I'll get rid of our prompt over here. I don't need it. All right, so this should just double the value. That's what it seems like it should do, right? So I type in 12 again. And I get 12, 12, hmm, right? So it's not really doing math. It's just doing string iteration, right? It's just replicating the string, in this case, twice. That's not what we want to do. What we need to do is convert A, the string, into a float. Now, you can do that with a function called, obviously enough, float. All right, let's take a look at our little hint here. Convert a string or number to a floating point number if possible. Why if possible? Well, you know, if I type in Larry, there's no way I can turn that into a floating point value, right? But I can do this. So if I type in a floating point value, this should convert it, and then we'll be all set. Let's try it again. Hey, 24. Just what we wanted, okay? Now we can normally um, combine this up something like this. Since since I know the, the the value given to me by input is a string, I can just immediately stuff that into the float function, like so. I don't have to do it on a separate line. This is a very common sort of uh, piece of code that you would see. You know, if you need to get a number, let's just do it all in one line. There's no reason to really have it as a string. Okay, enter a number. 12.2. All right, 24.4. Beautiful. Now, we can get a little fancier here. You know, if I put in something, uh, maybe... Let's do something a little bit more complicated, like I say. Uh, let's square... A. So I enter a number and I put in, uh, you know, 2.034, right? So here I am with one of these long digit things. I might want to clean this up a little bit. You might be able to use a round function on this, but it's probably a little bit nicer if you used a format specifier in the print statement. So what we do is we come in 
and specify how we want this thing to be printed and do this in two steps. So first let's decide how much space we need. So maybe I want, I don't know, 15 total spaces. And then I have to decide uh, the number of digits that are going to be in there. Now there's a little bit of a variation on this. So just sort of bear with me here. Um, 15.3, and I can use one of three letters, either an E, an F, or a G. If I use an E, this is going to be printed out in scientific notation. If I use an F, it's going to be in standard floating point. If I use a G, it's going to be the shorter of those two, and they're interpreted slightly differently. So I'll just show you what's going to happen here. First, I need a little flag to indicate that I don't want to print the value 15.3, but rather this is a format specifier. So let's just do form F here. And then I have to indicate that A is the variable that's going to go in here. As it turns out, we can actually have several of these, you know, if I want, I want to print five or six things across. So A here is going to get stuffed into this particular format. Okay, enter a number. So I'll type in, um, I don't know, 2.134. 4.509. All right. So if you count up the spaces, we basically have 15 spaces here, and there's three digits after the decimal point. Now, this understands, Python understands scientific notation. So you could type in something like uh, 2.34e minus 3. In other words, 2.34 milli. I get zero because if if we uh, square that I'm gonna get micro I'm gonna get like five micro out of this and given the spaces that we've allocated bleh, there's nothing there all right all right so here's a quick fix for this let's use exponent format type in the same value all right there you go. So there's your micro. So you have to be a little careful because sometimes, you know, it looks like your program works fine, but then with different data sets, mm, ugly things happen. You know, it's like overly coarsely rounded, if you will. Not so good. And then, of course, we have this G that I was talking about. Now, the difference with G is that the point 0.3 in this case is the total number of digits it's going to use. So we might want to expand that out a little bit. I'll just use 15.6 G but it's going to use the, like I said, the um, shorter of the two. All right, so in this case, that's what ends up happening. All right, if I typed in a different value, you know, let's type in uh, like 1.2, and now you can see, okay, 1.44, it does it in non-exponent format, right? It do the shorter of the two. This, this would be like if you did it with F. So I find G to be very handy because it'll keep things within, you know, a, a reasonable size range. All right. So there's our, our float input. You can also use an integer on this, an int, if you need integer values. Most of the time we're going to use real numbers, floating point values. But there are certainly applications, and we will look at some where integers are useful. Okay. All right. So... Now we can see how this works. Three cases, we're either going to use input as it is to get a string, you know, like somebody's name. We're going to use it with the float conversion function to get a real number or the int conversion function to get an integer value. And then we have this little added feature today on how to format the output. Okay, so, you know, um, that by itself kind of takes us along. So let's write a program. All right. Let's consider uh, using power law, right? Electrical power law. So what does that say? Uh, if I had a resistor and I knew the voltage across it, I could find the power developed in it simply by squaring the voltage and dividing by the resistance. In other words, um, I'll put a little remark over here, right? P is equivalent to the square of the voltage, right? 
divided by whatever the resistance is. So we're going to write a program. We'll simply ask for a voltage. We'll ask for a resistance, do the computation, and then print it out. Okay? So we can just use these particular values. All right. So I'll do, the, do this on one line. Since I know I'm going to use float values here, I'll just say input. All right. Read a string from standard input. Okay. What's my prompt? What do you want to say? Let's grab the voltage first. So we'll say, uh, please enter the voltage in volts. Units are good, right? Units are always good. Okay. I need to close the float function. Remember, you should always have balanced parentheses here, right? So here's the open for the input. Here's the close and there's the open for the float. All right, so that's going to get me V. I'm going to do the same kind of thing for the resistor value. And since I'm kind of a lazy person, I'm just going to update this like so. Please enter the resistance in ohms. All right, so now I have those two values, and we can do the computation. So P is going to equal V squared divided by R. And we're going to print that out. And I'm just going to do it straight up without any formatting first. Do a little line skip here. So far, so good. All right, do you see any errors in this program? Take a look at it. Pause if you need to. I do. Put one in there on purpose. Do you see what it is? Well, let's run it, because we'll see what happens. Please enter the voltage in volts. What do you want to do? How about 12 volts? Please enter the resistance in ohms. Uh, how about 100 ohms? Hey, what's this? It says there's a problem in line 8. V squared divided by R. V is not defined. What do you mean V is not defined? V is defined right here. Oh, no, it's not. Do you see it? Uppercase, lowercase, classic error. All right, so let's make that uppercase. Always remember, the computer will do what you tell it to do, not what you want it to do. It is not uh, in any way odd for people to write code, get an error like this, and then stare at their code for 20 minutes, not being able to find an error and thinking for sure this computer is screwed up. Something's wrong here. And then somebody else can walk by, look at your code and say, oh yeah, yeah, this is uppercase. Yeah, you screwed up. You know, and you want to just sit there and hit your head, right? My suggestion is be consistent. You know, if you're going to use uppercase, use uppercase all over the place. Or use lowercase all over the place. Uh, something I like to do, you know, if I have um, a voltage, for example, and it's from like point A to point B, I'll use V capital and then I'll say AB, lowercase, because I can't really do a, a uh, subscript, right? So that's how I'll kind of do a subscript. Or if I'm talking about like, you know, the, the current th through, you know, node A or something like that, I'll do this. Like I got a transistor and I want to know the collector current. I'll do uppercase I and lowercase C. All right. You just have to come up with some consistent naming scheme. All right. So this should work out really well as long as I continue. One more. Do you see it? Yep, right there. So give it a run. Please enter the voltage. Uh, let's use 10 volts. 
uh, 20 ohms. Five watts, okay? 10 squared, 100, divided by 20 ohms. Oh, there's your five watts, okay? All right, so now we know how to get values in. We know how to manipulate them, get them back out. Now we're starting to do something, but we're not doing anything extremely exciting. We have what's called a straight line program. In other words, we can get values in, we can manipulate them, produce values out here. It gets more interesting when we can start branching, when I can have conditional code. In other words, do certain things under certain times. Um, or iterate code, do things over and over and over automatically. That's where the power really starts to develop. So that's what we're going to be looking at in the next couple of videos. I'll see you then.